Okay, so today I have a really interesting video and we're going to derive E equals MT squared. And more specifically, we're going to derive the relativistic correction to the kinetic energy equation. And uh, that's you know more well known as 1 F MV squared. First, let us start by setting up our integral because we're going to have to integrate. Kinetic energy is the integral of force that over some distance, right? Uh, kinetic energy is a form of work. So let us start by... Um, setting this up, and we're going to only consider movement in the dx direction. So we're going to take dr, we're going to make it dx, and we're going to have work is equal to the integral. And we see it force, well force is equal to this, so we're going to replace our force in here with um, this, d, dp dt. So the time rate of change of momentum is equal to force. So we're going to have dp dt, oops, and because this is in the same direction, we're going to assume that momentum is only along the, the x direction. We're going to get that the dot product is just 1. So we're going to get that um, we can just times them by each other. dp is now a scalar, dt, dx. And we're now going to replace dp with this. Because p is equal to that. So we're going to get d differential amount of momentum mu over dt. Okay, so we see two things. Here we have to take user product rule, and here we get dx divided by dt, which is ux. And we use u rather than v uh, in special relativity because we have um, something called the Lorentz transformation. If you are, are familiar, maybe you're studying for special relativity for the next semester. But um, we use it for the Lorentz transformation where we have a uh, moving inertial reference frame. And uh, generally, u is used for um, speed of particles and such. So I like to, you know, introduce notation. So then we're going to get, we can factor out of m. We get m d gamma u. And then we don't need that anymore, right? So we said that we can make dx dt ux. And then we can bring, since we're only considering in the ux direction, we can just leave it as u. So now... We have this, and we gotta use the product rule. And for reference, we have d of f and g, where both are functions of x. You're gonna get that uh, d f times d g plus g times d f. So we're taking the differential. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we have this. So let's let's now do. We're gonna get using this. We're gonna get d gamma u is equal to u d gamma plus gamma d u. And we see that, okay, d u is d u, right? The derivative of velocity is the derivative of velocity. The derivative of gamma, the gamma function is up here. And we want to take the derivative of this, and it's only a function of u. Speed of light is constant. You know, one, obviously constant, square root square root. So we're going to have to take the derivative and we're going to get a du out of it, which means we can then integrate with respect to du. So let's do this in purple where we're going to work on this part. And I'm just going to take the d gamma out. So we're going to get uh, d gamma is then equal to... Okay, so let us let this whole inside part be g. We'll just call the function g. It's going to be 1 minus u over c squared, bring it dg, is equal to uh, minus 2u over c squared du. So we have this. I'm going to, you know, just so we don't forget about it. Now let's do the differential of this function where we define g to be the what's under the square root. So we take d, d of this, you know, function, which is now 1 over square root of g and uh, I'm gonna you know skip steps but I encourage you to you know try it you're gonna get that uh, minus one half times g to the minus three over two is what you should get out of it and that's then gonna be equal to um, minus two times we're substituting now what we call g one minus u over 2 squared 3 over 2. Uh, something to keep in mind is that this is, we're really applying the chain rule now, we've product, product rule, but this is now the chain rule, right? We called something 
function of something else, you have to multiply it by the derivative of that. Uh, minus 1 over 2, 1 minus u over c squared, 3 over 2, multiplied by minus 2 u over c squared du. And we see that we can get rid of this. The negative is going to cancel. And we're going to be left with u over c squared. And we see something interesting here. We have 1 divided by 1 minus u divided by c squared, 3 over 2. In other words, you could rewrite this bottom part as 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus u divided by c squared, the whole thing squared, cubed. And that's just gamma cubed. So we can just times it by gamma cubed. And that's what we found. Right, that's the differential. So we can now we see that this this d gamma u. Let's write this. This d of gamma u is equal to. Let's see how I wrote it. Uh, u u times well differential amount of uh, gamma. I forgot my du at the end. Du is going to be u over c squared gamma cubed du plus gamma du and that's our differential now let us see how we can simplify this right, we're gonna have to play around with it and I'm gonna actually carry this onto the top and bring it up by our integral so let's see so we can simplify this we're gonna have equals u squared over c squared gamma cubed plus gamma and then we're going to du right because we factor out a du d so let us think about something we can do because this looks like a pain this is not something i'd like to integrate okay so let us i think what i'm going to do is this i'm going to stick it back in multiply the um through See what I get. So we're gonna get then we're gonna sub this now. This is so this is equal to uh, we know we write this is equal to this, which is gonna be going here in our integrand. So we're gonna get okay. If I factor out a gamma cubed, I'd have to times this by the reciprocal squared, right? So I'm gonna show you what I mean. Um, this part might be a little quick, but I'll explain it. So we're going to get u and multiply that through. I need 1 over gamma squared. Right? So if I time that through, I'm going to get a gamma on top. du. Now, I did this because gamma, the inverse of gamma squared is this. Let us look at it. We're going to take 1 over minus the square root, uh, minus squared right, of the entire function of square root of 1 minus u over c squared. It's actually equal to 1 over u squared over c squared. And I see something interesting is going to happen. All right, if I substitute this in here, I'm going to get that this part and this part cancel out. It's going to simplify the integrand a lot for me. So we're going to sub that in now. We're going to get m so we can see that this is going to cancel and we're going to be left with m integral of u gamma cubed and then we're going to get this entire thing times 1 so then we're going to get du input the actual gamma function so we're going to get u divided by 1 minus u over c squared 3 over 2. And the divided by 2 comes from the fact that the gamma function is, by definition, 1 over the square root. And then we're going to get d. So, we can actually apply u sub here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to say that u is equal to 1 minus u over c Squared. I said u because u sub. Um, let's do a different variable sub. Let's do a fun Greek letter. 
let's do psi, right? Psi is fun. Psi is wave, psi is quantum, psi is fun. Then if we take d psi, it's going to be equal to what's zero. It's going to be minus minus two u over c squared du. And then we can substitute our limits in for this and you know simplify some things, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sum back just so we get the full effect of what we're doing. So we're going to then get m integral of um, u all over psi two, what was it? Uh, yeah, 3 over 2 times. Now we're going to get c squared divided by a minus 2u. Right, and this is now going to be d psi. And we get that our u's cancel. So now we can just integrate with respect to psi. Okay, so now we see something really interesting. We see that we're going to get a c squared times m squared. So that's m c squared. And we can, you know, factor that out because c is a constant. And we know that. And then we're going to integrate now. Well, this goes away. Um, oh, I wrote my minus 2 in the denominator. Minus 3 over 2 du. So we're going to get m c squared. Minus 2. And we're going to get... Uh, psi minus one half divided by minus one half, and then we're going to evaluate this from zero to some speed, right? So m c squared, and we see that you know this is going to go away. Uh, pop that in the middle for the aesthetic appeal, and we're going to times. Oops. We're then going to times this by 1 over psi, which psi was u over c squared and 0. I did not bring over my square root, right? This is this one, you know, this is a square root of psi. So we have a square root here. There we go. This looks much better. So we know that this is the gamma function, right? If we plug in 0 to the gamma function, we get 1. So actually, I'm gonna leave this part for you guys to do, um, but we're gonna when we plug in, you know, u, we get u, which is just you know gamma is a function of u. We just leave it as gamma. So we plug in zero, we just get one. So we end up getting gamma minus one m c squared. In other words, we have now kinetic energy is equal to gamma m c squared minus m c squared. So this is the kinetic energy equation and I'm going to you know, write it again in big letters because you know we did a lot of work. Probably we're uh, 20 minutes into this and we, we just we finally got it. Is equal to gamma minus 1 times m c squared and that's the equation we just derived. Now let's look at a plot. So this is, um, you know, I, I used LaTeX and I, you know, LaTeX saw as nice as I could for you guys. We have um, relativistic, right? This is this function. And we see that, okay, kinetic energy is a very good appro approximation. Very good, very good. You see around 1.5, right? So it's getting off. And then once you get near uh, the speed of light, which is approximately 3 e to the eighth meters per second, it, it it's so far off, it's not even funny. Now what we're going to do, is we're going to tailor expand what we found to get 1 fmv squared. I'm going to use uh, binomial expansion. And just to show you guys that you get back kinetic energy, you can use Taylor expansion however you want to do this, but squared one minus u over c squared to the minus one half. And if we use binomial expansion, we're gonna get the sum n equals zero. P R K, some people call it P, minus one and a half times uh, x to the n. Right? And we're gonna call this inside variable x use divided by c. We're going to get uh, 1 plus a minus 1 half is minus v over c squared plus a minus 1 half a minus 1 half minus divided by 2. I have a glare on this side of the uh, computer so it's hard, to me, hard for me to see. Anyways, and this whole thing is times can 
kinetic energy. It's going to be mc squared plus. Well, if we look at this, um, we times it by mc squared. All right, oops, I forgot to actually write it. Very sorry, guys. M c squared. C squared. Okay. So we're going to get, um, well, this is c squared. Divided by c squared is going to cancel out. You're going to get, and the negatives cancel out. You're going to get 1 half mv squared. And then this is a rather complicated expression, but you're going to end up getting 3 eighth uh, m. Let's see, that's c to the fourth. So you're going to get c squared divided by. So this is actually the first relativistic correction to the energy equation. This is obviously the kinetic energy, and this is the rest energy. So we just, you know, Taylor expanded to get that. But um, I just wanted to show you guys that a lot of physics classes, intro to physics classes, will have you do this. So it's good to see it. Um, so this is really, you know, let's go. Really, we just, it's exciting. We, we, derived, we derived uh, MC squared. And, um, okay, well, thank you guys for watching. Not much more to this video.